Hello everyone, and welcome to today's video. In this tutorial, we will be exploring the RL Low Pass filter, specifically the passive version. We'll take a closer look at its components, how it works, its frequency response characteristics, and the concept of the cutoff frequency. To help us visualize its behavior, we will be using a circuit simulator with a sweep function to demonstrate the filter's performance. The RL Low Pass filter consists of two main components, an inductor, L, and a resistor, R. These passive elements play a crucial role in determining the behavior of the filter. In our specific example, we have a 70mH millihenry inductor and a 35 ohm resistor connected in series. The inductor stores energy in its magnetic field, while the resistor dissipates energy as heat. Together, they form a filter that allows low frequency signals to pass through while attenuating higher frequency signals. The RL low pass filter is designed to selectively allow low frequency components of a signal to pass through while attenuating higher frequency components. When an input signal is applied to the filter, the inductor resists changes in the current flowing through it, creating a barrier to high frequency signals. The resistor, on the other hand, dissipates energy, further reducing the amplitude of high frequency components. As a result, the output signal exhibits a gradual decline in the amplitudes of higher frequencies, effectively filtering them out. The cutoff frequency is a fundamental parameter of any low-pass filter, including the RL low-pass filter. It represents the frequency at which the filter begins to significantly attenuate the input signal. Frequencies below the cutoff frequency pass through the filter with minimal attenuation, while frequencies above the cutoff frequency experience increasing levels of attenuation. The cutoff frequency of an RL low pass filter can be calculated using the formula FC equals or slash 2 pi L, where FC represents the cutoff frequency, R is the resistance, and L is the inductance. In our example, with a resistor value of 35 ohms and an inductance of 70 mH, we can calculate the cutoff frequency as follows FC equals 35 slash 2 pi into 0 0.07. This yields a cutoff frequency of approximately 75.24 Hz. It's important to note that the cutoff frequency is determined solely by the values of the resistor and inductor in the circuit. The frequency response of the RL low pass filter describes how the filter affects different frequencies within the input signal. In our demonstration, we will be using a circuit simulator with a sweep function. This allows us to observe the filter's behavior across a range of frequencies by systematically varying the input signal's frequency. In our simulation, we will sweep the input signal's frequency logarithmically from 20 Hz to 1 kHz over a duration of 100 milliseconds. This logarithmic sweep provides a comprehensive view of the filter's response across a wide frequency range. As we run the simulation and observe the scope, we will witness the input and output waveforms. The input waveform represents the original signal fed into the RL low pass filter, while the output waveform shows how the filter modifies the input signal by attenuating higher frequencies. As the frequency sweep starts at lower frequencies, the input and output waveforms align closely. This indicates that the filter has minimal effect on these low frequency components. The inductor allows low frequency signals to pass through with little attenuation while the resistor dissipates a small amount of energy. As a result, the output waveform remains relatively similar to the input waveform, with only slight changes in amplitude due to the resistor's effect. As the frequency sweep reaches the cutoff frequency, which in our case is approximately 75.24 Hz, we start to observe a noticeable change in the output waveform. The amplitude of the higher frequency components begins to decrease, indicating the filter's attenuation effect. The inductor's impedance increases with frequency, leading to a greater opposition to changes in current and causing a more significant reduction in the higher frequency components. As the frequency continues to increase beyond the cutoff frequency, the attenuation becomes more prominent. The output waveform exhibits a significant reduction in the amplitude of higher frequency components, while the lower frequency components still pass through relatively unaffected. This behavior demonstrates the filter's ability to effectively suppress and filter out higher frequency signals. By observing the input and output waveforms on the scope throughout the frequency sweep, we gain insights into the RL low-pass filter's characteristics. 
We can identify its ability to pass low-frequency signals with minimal distortion while attenuating higher frequencies. The cutoff frequency serves as a boundary where the transition from minimal attenuation to significant attenuation occurs. The RL low-pass filter has practical applications in various fields. In audio systems, it can be used to remove high-frequency noise or interference, resulting in a cleaner and more accurate audio output. In communication systems, it helps separate different frequency bands, enabling efficient transmission and reception. The RL low-pass filter's frequency-selective properties make it a valuable tool in signal processing, circuit design, and many other applications. And there you have it. We've explored the RL low-pass filter, passive, using a circuit simulator, focusing on its frequency response characteristics, including the concept of the cutoff frequency. By understanding the cutoff frequency, we can determine the range of frequencies that the RL low-pass filter allows to pass through with minimal attenuation. I hope this video has provided a clear understanding of the basic principles behind the RL low-pass filter. If you have any questions or need further clarification, please feel free to ask. Thank you for watching.